نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تسالون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعاذنا الله وإياكم من النار Brothers and sisters تقبل الله منا ومنكم Salatana wa siyamana wa duana. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our prayers, also our fasting, and also our dua that we made in the month of Ramadan. As it is not hidden from you, the day of Eid was a day of happiness, a day of enjoyment, a day when the families they get together, they enjoy themselves, a day of eating and drinking. Even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us about the day of Eid. يوم الفطر ويوم النحر وأيام التشريق عيدنا أهل الإسلام هن أيام أكل وشرب The day of al-fitr that just passed The day of al-nahar The next Eid that comes The day of ayam al-tashriq They are the days of celebration The a'yad for the muslimin هن أيام أكل وشرب They are days of eating and drinking Some of the scholars People like Ibn Uthimin رحمه الله تعالى They hold the position that the Eid It lasts three days but that's an opinion. Brothers and sisters, there's a specific thing that I want to speak about today, inshallah ta'ala, that I personally feel it is crucial, <coughs> vital, and uh, very much important. Allah wa huwa, brothers and sisters, the situation of some of our Muslim brothers in the Middle East. Most of us, we were able to celebrate without any problems. Our kids were happy. We were able to go to Toys R Us, WH Smith, and by the Batman and the Spider-Man for our kids. It means the world to us, for our kids to be happy, especially on the day of Eid. And for them to be happy on this day, it's a magnificent thing that we all try to do. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, I know it's a day of happiness these days, and I apologize for gate crashing the party, but there is a lot of our Muslim brothers and sisters, our kids in the Middle East, they didn't even have a loaf of bread to eat on the Eid day, let alone be happy and get gifts. You know, we as a Muslim Ummah, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us, The believing brother with his other brother, they're like a building. Each part of the building is strengthens the other. It came in another hadith, If one part of the body is going through pain, going through suffering, then the whole body begins to suffer from a problem and a sickness. So we as Muslims are like one body. And it's very, very hard, brothers and sisters, not to, or to have, to be able to celebrate Al-Eid without having this thought of our Muslim brothers on the back of our mind. Just before the day of Eid, there was videos going around of some of our kids being pulled out of the rubble, bombs were going off, they are suffering, they have nothing to eat. Just they were collecting for the orphans, some of them who have no parents, their parents have passed away. Brothers and sisters, <coughs> the point I'm trying to inshallah ta'ala is get to until when are we going to see this taking place? When will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reinstall the happiness and the izza back into the Muslim ummah? It's very, very clear. Wallahi, it is not rocket science. It doesn't require an intelligent person to come, a person of intellect, to come and understand what the change should be. 
Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he told us in Majmu'a al-Fatawa, مَا رَأَيْتُ شَيْئًا يُغَذِّيَ الْعَقْلَ وَالْرُوحَ وَيَحْفَظُ الْجِسْمَ وَيَضْمَنُ السَّعَادَةَ أَكْثَرْ مِنْ إِدَامَةِ النَّظْرِ بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ I haven't seen anything that feeds the mind and also the soul and it also preserves the person's body and it guarantees happiness. This is what everybody wants, right? Happiness in our personal life and also in a Muslim ummah. أَكْثَرُ مِنْ more than then constantly looking into the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is not a problem, brothers and sisters, except that it was discussed to us in the Quran. Allah tells us, Never did Allah send down a sickness except that He sent a cure with it. If we want the happy life that we are looking for, whether it is between our families, husband and wife, father and son, mother and daughter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells in the Quran, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَى وَهُمْ مُؤْمِنٍ Two conditions are mentioned. Whoever, from the male and the female, he does good deeds, and he is also a believer. فَلَا نُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاتٍ طَيِّبًا This person, we are going to give him a happy life. We can try whatever means in order to solve our problems. And the people have tried. They have protested enough. They have signed as many petitions. Is the situation of the Muslim Ummah changing? Is it getting better? Is our problem being solved? We have tried every means. And we are going to carry on trying every means. But the matter is very, very simple. I never said this to you. Rather, it is the Prophet ﷺ that told us for any problem that comes down, what to do. Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us in the Quran, in a very, very simple way, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ Allah Azza wa Jal has promised those who have believed وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ and those who do the good deeds لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ We will give them authority upon the face of this earth. Just like the people before they were given authority. وَلَيُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ الَّذِي اَرْفَضَى لَهُمْ And these people they will also be established and given authority upon the face of this earth. When will this happen? When the people now, they start singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with tawheed and they stay away from shirk. Someone might be wondering now, okay, do we have anyone in the community who worships statues? Is this something that is common in our society? Is this something that we even see taking place? Brothers and sisters, that is not the only form of shirk that takes place in our society and that is very widespread. From the most common problems that people call me about and they are currently suffering, fr suffering from is sihr. Some people are possessed, jinn possession, something very, very common. I don't know exactly here, but in Leicester, in certain places, it is very, very common. Going to a magician, taking something that is called a ta'weez. Also the Prophet ﷺ explained to us, it is very, very common in our society. The Prophet ﷺ, he told us, مَنْ عَلَّقَ تَمِيمَةً فَقَدْ أَشْرَكَ It's a form of shirk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not uplift the ummah suffering until the people they remove these things. He told us whoever hangs a talisman, you will see this in many communities, whoever hangs these talismans, these ta'weez, in Somali they've got a word for it but it currently crossed my mind. Whoever hangs this, this person has fallen into shirk. Brothers and sisters, wallahi, time and time again, a person is suffering from jinn. He's suffering from magic. He calls me the first question that I tend to ask them, do you have a ta'weez around you? And guess what, brothers and sisters? Sometimes it's in the back, sometimes it's in the clothes, sometimes it is somewhere in the house. The possessed individual, they can't hear the adhan. Difficult for them. The ibadah becomes difficult upon them. How do we expect any sort of problem to be solved in our lives? When the means we have taken, it is from the worst of the things. And you know, brothers and sisters, Wallahi, I've worked with brothers pertaining this, 95% of these things that are wrapped up, that the people give to each other, as long as you wear a mashallah, you're fine. It has the names of Fir'aun, the names of Haman, Qarun, Abu Lahab, Iblis. The most recent one that we opened, it had in there, we are worshippers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa 
These are the kind of things, brothers and sisters, that is very, very common in our society. Likewise, calling on to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes a problem happens, we might call on to Ali radiallahu anhu. It is still a jahiliya trait, a ignorant trait that we still find in our communities. Brothers and sisters, wallahi, we can try whatever we want. Inna Allah la yughayru ma biqawmin hatta yughayru ma biyanfusihim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, when the problems will be taken away, and now brothers and sisters, just check with me this hadith. Do you not find a lot of the people they are engaged in that which is mentioned in the hadith? I'm not saying anyone that has fallen into it here, but you just judge for yourself. He told us, إِذَا تَبَايَعْتُمْ بِالْعِينَ وَأَخَذْتُمْ بِأَذْنَابِ الْبَطَرِ وَرَضِيتُمْ بِالْسَرَعِ Once you start dealing with riba, interest-based or riba-based transactions, and you start chasing the dunya, chasing the tails of the cows, وَرَضِيتُمْ بِالْزَرَعِ and you have now become satisfied with that which you have in the dunya. Your crops and your fields that you're working for. And then the Prophet said, وَتَرَكْتُمُ jihad." You have left of al-jihad. And there's many forms of al-jihad. The Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned in his kitab Zad al-Mi'ad. Jihad al-Nafs is one of them. Which is to stop yourselves from the muharramat. The fitan, the shubahat and the shahwat, you prevent yourself from it. You control yourself when there's a temptation, when there's a girl that you want, when there is a transaction of haram that you know money could come out of it very, very easily. But you know it is haram, you stop yourself from it. And then you have the other forms of al jihad that was mentioned. What will happen? The Prophet sallallahu told us, Sallallahu alaykum dhullan la yanzi'u ankum hatta tarju'u ila deenikum. Allah azza wa jal will send down upon you humiliation until you come back to your religion. No, 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 brothers, before someone gets the wrong impression, I am not trying to encourage the people to go and fight. To go and join Aida, Wallah, I'm not doing this. Rather, what we're trying to say is, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, until you come back to your religion. The ma'asi that might be in our lives, remember, brothers and sisters, when we sin, other people are suffering. Zainab bin Jahsha radiallahu anhu, she said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, أَنَهْلِكُ وَفِينَ الصَّالِحُونَ قَالَ نَعْمِ لَا كَثْرُ الْخَبَثِ Will we be destroyed? And amongst us are the Salihun. The Prophet said, Naam. When evil becomes so common and widespread amongst the people, everybody will be destroyed. When the earthquake comes and he takes a country or he takes a city, is it going to call the righteous guy, Akhi, listen, I'm coming. Get yourself ready, leave. Wallah is going to come and he's going to take everyone. Brothers and sisters, Wallah, we can try as much as we can. We need to nakhif. عند حدود الله سبحانه وتعالى. There's many temptations that we know ourselves that we are falling into that we need to stay away from. If only we looked at the shahada and we studied it properly, which a lot of people don't know. What does the latter part of the shahada mean? وأن محمد عبده ورسوله طاعته في ما أمر وتصديقه في ما أخبر وإجتناب ما نهى عنه وزجر. What Allah سبحانه وتعالى told you, you do it straight away. Whatever he said, you believe it straight away. And everything he criticized, he warned against, he told us that it's haram, we stay away from it straight away. This is what the latter part of the shahada means. Now we ask ourselves, when a command comes down, do we submit to it? Are we from those that are mentioned in the ayah? إِنَّمَا كَانَ قَوْلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذَا دُعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ يَقُولُ سَمِعْنَا وَطَعْنَا وَأُولَيْكُمْ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Are we from these kind of people when a command comes? They say, Sami'na wa ata'na wa sallimna. We have submitted to it, we listen and we obey. Aqulu ma tusma'un wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sayyid al-muslimin. Astaghfiruh, inna wa al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen. Nabiina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira amma ba'd. Brothers and sisters, التوحيد أول لو كانوا يعلمون. The توحيد should come first before anything else if only the people knew, as the poet mentioned. You know, brothers and sisters, I personally believe that the Muslim Ummah is suffering because we have gone away from the fundamentals of our religion. Learning a توحيد, studying it, putting a lot of effort into it, teaching our children from the names of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is an awwal. What does that mean? If you look now in our Quran and likewise in the Sunnah of the Prophet you find 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be given precedence to everything. When we wake up in the morning, what do we say? Asbahna ala fitrat al-Islam ala kalimat al-Ikhlas. We have woken up upon the kalimat al-Ikhlas. Ila 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 tawheed. We wake up upon tawheed. We go to sleep upon tawheed. The first command in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, ya ikhwan, is a tawheed. Ya ayuha nasu abudu rabbakum. The first prohibition in the Quran, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا It is to stay away from shirk. When a person or a baby, newly born baby, he enters into this world, what do they do? They read adhan in his ear. Again, tawheed. A person is dying. مَنْ كَانَ آخِرُ كَلَامِهِ لَا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ Again, a tawheed. Our whole life, brothers and sisters, is a tawheed. When we worship in Allah Azza wa Jal, if we are not doing it with sincerity, solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the salat, the janazah, the sadaqah, Whatever we are doing, if it is not connected with al-ikhlas, a tawheed, nothing is being accepted from us. Our whole life, brothers and sisters, is a tawheed. And likewise, it is the amrun that we need to, especially our children, that we need to take very, very seriously and teach them and put a lot of effort into it. Brothers and sisters, another point that I want to mention, inshallah ta'ala, and it's more relevant for the youth especially, so please pay attention, is this kind of mentality that some of our youth might have, or the shaitan might be whispering in a person's ear. And it applies to everyone generally as well. Walillahi alhamdu wal minna. I stood in the month of Ramadan on Laylatul Qadr. I worshipped Allah Azza wa Jal. I am sorted for the next 84 years. Because I stood on Laylatul Qadr, I'm, I'm tamam. I am fine. I don't have any issues. I can relax now. Brothers and sisters, making yourself relaxed after the month of Ramadan is not exactly what I mean, but I'm talking about dropping your ibadah levels that you were on. Or even to an extent where a person thinks, Khalas, Ramadan's done, I'm going to go back to my old bad habits or my filthy ways that I was upon. Me, as a person who had a past, what a lot of the youth tend to do, especially in the last 10 days, is plan their Eid. Especially with the weekend coming up. It was weekday now. Most of you will find that everything, the action-packed days are going to start on the weekend. I don't know if you are aware, brothers and sisters. Recently in Birmingham, two sisters in the month of Ramadan, they were drunk. Two men came out of the masjid. They got into an accident and one of the sisters died in the month of Ramadan. Just before the end of it. The question that I want to put forth, inshallah ta'ala, to anyone who has the mentality that inshallah on Eid, just for one day, just for one day, and this is what the shaitan does. How many times have we heard this from our friends? Listen, akhi, nothing is going to happen. Just one time. We go to the club or we go to the shisha bar. We're just going to do it for one time. And this is what shaitan done to who? Our father and our mother, Adam and Hawa. وَقَاسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمْ مِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ he swore to them, I am a sincere advisor to you. Just do that one time. And this is what we hear all the time. So brothers and sisters, that one time that you want to do ma'asi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or you want to disobey him, you want to go against his command. We've seen it before, brothers and sisters. A person dying on Eid day in haram. People have died with the shisha bar in their mouths. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the shisha pipe, sorry takes your soul while you have a shisha pipe in your mouth. Or you decided to go to the club one time, thinking that I worked hard in the month of Ramadan, now it's just for one time. And you're jumping up and down upon that song that's being sang, or song, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes your soul. Or you decide to take something, whether it's a drug, weed, alcohol, whatever it might be, just for one time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes your soul. Brothers and sisters, the guy that knows, and the guy that doesn't know, they're not equal. Qul hal yastawi alladhina ya'lamun wa alladhina la ya'lamun. Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us, say to them, O Muhammad, the guy that knows and the guy that doesn't know, are they equal? You know there's a verse in the Quran that is very, very powerful and I ask you, our brothers and sisters, to look up the tafsir, to memorize it, to ponder upon this ayah. وَمَنَا عَرَضَ عَن ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً It's right at the end of Surah Taha. Whoever now turns away from my Quran, this person, فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً طَنْكَةً This person, we're going to give him a depressed life. A depressed life. You must be wondering, okay, I might be going through depression. 
about yourself. Did you go against the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of it you lost your job? Or because of this you're not getting any success in your life? وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى He doesn't stop there. On يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ He will be brought, he's blind. قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتِ لِأَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا He will say, Ya Allah, I used to be someone that could see. Why have you brought me today and I am blind? قَالَ كَذَلِكَ تَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى Our verses came to you. What was right, what was wrong. You knew that you doing this action is wrong. But you carried on doing it. Your ayat came to you. Fantasy, you put it to the side. وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى And today you will be forgotten. You will be left, you will be put to the side. Brothers and sisters, wallahi, if you want a happy life, and this is why I started the khutbah with, it is very, very simple. People are suffering maybe because of our sins. We want the happiness maybe in our marriage to be solved. None other do the righteous action. Maybe you're doing something haram. There's problems in your household. Maybe there is something that you've been doing for a very long time that is against the sharia. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us here, depression and the happy life. How to get the depressed life and how to get the happy life. And brothers and sisters, the message is kindly asking to donate generously with the projects that they're doing. They are in need of your help. So whoever can inshallah ta'ala help them, then please help them inshallah ta'ala. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا صرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساعة مستقرا ومقاما سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إلى واخم الصلاة